I'm John Skinner, and this supports my book, Striper Pursuit, and you can learn more about the book at striperpursuit.com. So the last couple of videos I've done uh, have been around weather events that get the fish going. The first one was uh, in the wake of a storm. The next one was on a cold snap. And uh, this one is on the onset of a storm. And unfortunately, I'm a little bit early here. Um, I'd like to have gotten uh, more into the teeth of this. But the forecast was uh, a little bit behind. And, you know, you, you, you look at the forecast, you try to plan. Uh, but I don't like seeing that blue sky up there. I don't like that little bit of sunlight. Um, as this trip goes along, um, you know, you're going to get to see to my left uh, out of the frame right now some pretty wicked clouds, and it's going to cloud over, and I'm going to get some action. Uh, but, yeah, this is one of the um, weather events that you want to look for is the onset of a storm. And, you know, I'm, I'm not complaining here. I'm going to catch some fish on this trip. It's just not going to be um, as fast-paced as I would have liked. So even though I don't have uh, the cloud cover and the rain I'd like to have, the wind is picking up uh, real well, and uh, it's, it's pretty much sustained around 20 knots, some gusts of 25 knots, so it's kicking up. Uh, and it's also somewhat of a crosswind, so uh, I'm using, uh, again, the Tsunami Talking Popper. I, I seem to be hung up on this plug lately. Uh, the XD model is a little bit heavier, and the reason I've chosen this heavier plug right now is to deal with that crosswind. Uh, I need a plug that's going to bite the surface a little bit. Uh, some pencils would tend to just skip across the top of the water uh, with a crosswind because it will pick up some belly in the line. Um, this plug digs in pretty well and as you've probably seen in uh, previous videos it, it catches very well. Uh, good plug. And I've chosen a blue plug for this because there's definitely some mullet around. This is early October. Uh, the mullet typically move mid to late September in these waters. This is eastern Long Island. Uh, there's definitely some coming through. I think the run was just a, a little bit delayed from some warmer weather. But uh, you know, I've seen some around, so I'm, I'm going to choose a blue popper. So you might have noticed I missed a fish there, and it uh, actually happens a couple times on this video. And um, It's pretty typical with poppers, a lot of times they'll blow up on the plug and you might hook them momentarily and, and lose them. Um, when that happens, just keep it going, keep the rhythm going. Um, one thing that, uh, if I notice that the fish are like kicking the plug up in the air, sometimes I'll stop the retrieve and let the plug sit or just settle for a second and, and get the retrieve going again. But uh, this fish blew up on it a couple of times or maybe it was multiple fish. You just keep the plug going. A lot of times you'll uh, end up getting a hookup. Well, as I'm listening to this with headphones, I can really hear that wind blowing. Um, I've got the barbs crushed down just a little bit on this plug. I just got to get this fish correctly oriented to... Uh, pop the hook out so I'll flip them over a little bit and get that one hook point exposed so I can pop it out. Yeah, you can see that weather's really working its way in there and uh, and it's moving in pretty fast. Um, and you know, that's what I was hoping for is to be fishing and that kind of stuff the whole time, but like I said, just, just a little bit ahead of it here. Here's a good look at the hand up above the reel uh, to pump that rod back and forth with the pencil popper. Uh, the line is between my thumb and forefinger. I'm cranking very slow as I pop the, the rod back and forth, and uh, that gives the plug that nice dancing action. On my YouTube channel, I have uh, numerous videos uh, with pencil popping technique if you wanted to learn more. So the title of this video had the word slam in it, and uh, the slam wasn't in that you know, I was going to catch a tremendous number of fish on this video, but it's in that I will catch uh, striped bass, a bluefish, 
and a false albacore all in the same trip. And even though I catch quite a few of those, uh, all three of those species, I almost never catch them all in the same trip. Um, for whatever reason, it just doesn't seem to work out that way. And one of the reasons is very typically uh, you want to target the false albacore specifically, and I'll get into that uh, when we get close to catching that fish. So this rod is a 9-foot custom lama glass. I built it from a 10-foot uh, GSB 120 1L blank, 1 foot cut from the butt. Uh, the reel is a Pen Slammer 3 6500. It's spooled with 30-pound test spider wire stealth braid. There's a 3-foot liter of 50-pound test green trilene big game monofilament uh, for the liter material. Tactical angler's clip on one end, barrel swivel on the other. So this plug ships with a single hook on the back. Uh, it's got a little tail feather on it. And it's a, it's a high quality hook. It's a VMC single hook that it ships with. And it, but it's an open eye hook. And I don't know, to me it's just one little extra liability that that eye could open. So I take off that single hook, I replace it with a split ring and a treble, and then that's uh, one less thing I need to worry about. Mm. So even though I've got those clouds moving in, the sun is getting higher and that's definitely working against me and I had you know, fairly good bass action there I, I was um, yeah, I know I'm editing it out but I got those three bass and dropped one other all within I, I think it was about 25 minutes or so it was they were fairly close together uh, and then that's it I, I don't catch another bass on this video um, right at the beginning of this cast I missed what looked like a big bluefish and then I hooked up a smaller one. Uh, that's what this is here. So this is uh, well, definitely an unimpressive fish that I'm going to catch here, but it's kind of important because then it gets me the uh, striped bass bluefish uh, albi slam because this is the only bluefish I'll end up catching as well. Then it's gonna, I'm going to go quite a while, uh, oh, well over an hour, uh, without doing anything, and uh, we'll get to that in a second. Alright, so let's talk about false albacore a little bit. Uh, I know that there have been some around. I have not seen any on this trip. Sometimes you'll see them splashing. Uh, if I was fishing specifically for them, which is something I do for a couple of weeks e each year, uh, then I use a completely different tackle. I would be using a, a lighter rod with about a one ounce uh, metal lure. It's called a deadly dick. I would have 20 pound tests fluorocarbon leader material and I'd be cranking that tin so fast that it skipped across the top of the water. Uh, the idea is that they have very keen eyesight and uh, that technique works well because with this tin skipping across the surface of the water they can't get a very good look at it. Uh, fluorocarbon leader material, uh, you know, especially on a high retrieve, they're not seeing that, they're not being spooked by the line. Now because of the way a pencil popper thrashes on top of the water, uh, it's hard for a fish to get a good look at that, and it's something that a false albacore can be fooled by, and that's what's happened here. And I know right almost from the start that I've got a false albacore because uh, the rod tip has got a very high frequency bounce or a pulsation to it. Um, and plus the fish is just so fast that neither a bluefish nor a bass is going to zip back and forth with this kind of speed. So. Uh, I know that's what I've got now, and um, it's it's pretty unusual that I get one on a pencil, but um, you know that's what's happened here. And this is a little bit more than an hour since uh, I caught anything. Uh, that small bluefish was the last fish I caught. These clouds came right in. Uh, I thought they were going to pick up the fishing, but they really didn't, and it could be because you know now it's a couple hours after sunrise and. Uh, yeah, it was just poor timing. I wish those clouds would have been around at daybreak.
So I would almost never leave my rod like that behind me on the beach. And I've just noticed I've got a Jeep coming at me right down the water line and pretty fast. So I've got to hustle over here, get that fish back in the water, get my rod. All right. And there it is. Uh, that was a, a nice way to end the trip. If you like these videos, please subscribe to my channel.